Welcome to your Daily Five for Monday, May 15th, 2023. Lando and I have completed the main campaign for the Gotham Knights video game. Now, we will likely be talking about it in far more detail on Friday, but I wanted to do a kind of uh, a brief review of it, just in case for some reason we don't get to it. I didn't want to forget. But overall, if you've watched the YouTube videos... I think I, I think there's two out at this point, but if you watch the very first YouTube video that I posted to the show channel on Gotham Knights, the very first thing I say in that video is that I expected this video game to be like Outriders, the other game that we played, oh, I don't know how, how many years ago it was, that where we found it to be a completely empty, silly, completely forgettable narrative game that had really fun combat and a good co-op experience. And that is exactly what I would say about Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights has quite possibly one of the stupidest Batman stories that Lando and I have ever experienced, top to bottom. Not only is it, does it not really make any sense or feel like the people who wrote it understand the Batman character at all, but it also features, and I, and I don't like to necessarily say this about anybody because... I don't want to be mean or anything. I really don't. But this has got to be the worst Batman I've experienced in any media, short of maybe the really terribly racist one from the old 1920s, 30s, like Penny Arca- or Penny uh, film things. This really terrible version of the character that was it may, it may have been later in the 30s, but it was pretty terrible. Outside of that, this is, without even any qualification, the worst Batman in terms of the way the character is portrayed, the voice acting, which again, I, I'm, this is something that is directed. The person doesn't just come in and make this stuff up. He's told how to do this, the, the voice actor. So I'm not even necessarily blaming the voice actor. It's not this person's fault that they were giving utterly bad material and probably some really, really wildly off direction because you would never know this was Batman outside of the fact that it is somebody wearing a Batman suit. You would never know. It feels like a rejected, uncharted character most of the time. And this character is placed into a story that, and it's abruptly, it's very brief. This is a game that we did, we really, Lando, you will hear in the last video because I recorded it. He doesn't believe that we're at the end of the game already because there's barely anything to play through in the game. Now, hearing all this, you may think that this is a terrible review that I would say don't ever play this game, but... I actually wouldn't say that it was a lot of fun as a co-op experience. The combat was interesting. It it never got boring in terms of fighting enemies. Yeah, there was repetitiveness. Don't get me wrong, but the enemies ramped the actual fights uh, involved some crowd control and some fun combat mechanics. The, the outfits were neat to try to put together and they were different stats and it wasn't too much of a gear score thing. I mean, there was some of it, but probably as much of a gear score as I'd be willing to tolerate and not something that was tough to manage. And, In terms of the co-op experience, we did have a really good time. Also, it helps that we bought it for more than 50% off. If I had paid $60 or $70 for this game, let me tell you, this would be a much different review. I would be pretty pissed if I had paid full price for this game. But as a $30, not even experience, um, I'm fine with it. I think I got my monies out of it. We played it for... Oh, three or four weeks for $30. That's certainly not a bad cost ratio proposition. But if you're going to play this, do not for a second come into it expecting a Batman experience because it really isn't, except in one area. This game really made me fall in love with the Jason Todd character, which is what Lando played, the Red Hood. He's great. Now, Batgirl, who I played, Again, bad direction. I don't know what they were going for with, in terms of the way this character acted. Oh, she, I like Batgirl as a character. I don't necessarily like Batgirl in this game, but whatever. She had the best move set for what I was doing. But Red Hood, by far the MVP. That character, some of the things he says, his general attitude, I loved that character. So if for no other reason, if nothing else, Gotham Knights delivered, it made me take a character who I had zero interest in from what I knew of the comics, and I haven't read anything, but from what I knew of him in the comics, I was like, okay, uh, Red Hood, sure, I get it. Yeah, the gimmick doesn't really work for me. But in this game, this makes me want to read Red Hood comics because I love the character, and I can only hope that he's anywhere near as fun in the comics as he is in this game. So that's Gotham Knights in a nutshell. Buy it or don't, that's my review. Later.